Somewhere in front of me is a new box for my deck of UNO cards. So this isn't just a box project, this is also me launching my Summer of Boxes. Basically, it's part of the skill up game. I'm gonna keep going with what I've been doing, but going away from just joints, now I'm gonna start making boxes. I'm gonna hopefully make some nice boxes. Uh, I'm sure that they're gonna start off pretty crappy, and then hopefully by the end of summer, another three, four months away, then they'll start to get a little bit nicer. Um, to kick off this project, I've decided to go for a really small box. So me and the kids really like playing Uno. We've had this deck of cards for about five years. Um, the box has seen better days. It's just a little cardboard one. It's held together with sticky tape and stickers, basically. So I've got some Messmate, which I'm going to attempt to rip down the middle and then hopefully have continuous grain all the way around the box. Probably won't get there because I haven't tried it before and I'm sure I'll do it backwards and stuff something up, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So. Let's get into it. As soon as I started cutting, I realized that my original SketchUp plan that I made for this box on the computer was just no good. So I played a wild card, threw my plan away and decided to make whatever the hell I felt like. I guess I'm learning already. After ripping it on the table saw and running it through the thicknesser just to take off that smooth face, sorry, just to take off that rough face, yes, I had continuous grain from one piece to the other piece. However, it was too thick for the purpose of this box. It was about nine or 10 mil, so I brought it down to six mil. By cutting away more material, it does reduce the effect of the continuous grain, or well, basically removes it, um, but seeing as that the wood is so smooth and the grain so clear and straight on this one anyway, it's not really gonna make a difference to my box at the end. So, I'm gonna continue. I ended up playing a reverse card here and completely flipped the direction that the wood grain would be going in as per my plan. So that meant that continuous grain doesn't even come into the picture anymore. I'll try and do something with continuous grain the next time around. On the table saw I cut a 45 degree angle on both edges of the blanks and then I chopped them up to a rough length so that I could make sure that I would have sap wood visible on one face. I really like the look of these veins in the wood. I don't fill them with glue or a resin or anything, but I just like how they look and the texture of them. I also chopped off a small section on the end of the narrower piece, as the very end of it wasn't nice and straight. I wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally use it in the project. It's interesting, watching this footage back, the plastic guard that I put on my sled seems to really be inconvenient and troublesome to work around. But just to be really clear, it certainly doesn't feel awkward to use. I'm really happy that I added it to the table saw sled. It doesn't translate well in the video though, I guess. I think the best argument I have for it is that it's easily removable via one knob. I can just spin it, it'll be off in five seconds. But ever since adding it, I haven't felt the need to remove it even once so far. And the box glue up itself was really simple. Masking tape to clamp the pieces together and then I used a ruler just to make sure they were all aligned and nice and straight. Honestly, I should just give up on big projects and just focus on small little boxes. Then I won't have to go out and buy any more clamps. For the base and for the top of the box, I wanted to use a wood with a little bit of a contrasting colour. So I grabbed a piece of Merbo decking and rough cut three pieces. The base was just glued straight onto the bottom of the box, then it was planed and sanded flush. I thought a light chamfer would be really nice on the base, so I could use the plane to put that on as well. I 
I ended up sanding that chamfer into a roundover as I figured that would feel nicer to hold. The plug for the lid was trimmed down on the table saw to the size that it needed to be and then I snuck up on a really tight fit using the sander. The Mervo section for the lid that I glued it onto was really oversized so that way I couldn't stuff up the glue up by not positioning the uh, inner plug correctly. It's a really tight fit, I must admit, but I'm going to leave it like this and see what happens in the future. So with the lid on, I marked out where to cut it and trimmed it at the table saw. Then I flushed up the two short edges on the sander. Originally, I did want to flush up all four sides so, the, so that the top would look like the base, but the lid is really hard to grip on the two sides that are flushed already. So I decided to leave the two long edges with a little bit of a hangover and then I put a, a little round over on them. Otherwise my kids probably wouldn't be able to open up the box. So I thought it might be time to do a status check on the box, but I've just realized that it's almost finished anyway. So I've got my box, the miters have come out really nice and tight all the way around, they look really good. The base is just glued on, but then it's uh, flush sanded all the way around, so that also feels good. The lid is on there now, and I've got that little base plate inside the middle so that it fits in nice and snug. And when you do that, it's perfectly strong and able to keep itself in there. So much in fact that you can put it upside down and shake it and the lid still won't pop out. I'm sure it will if I keep trying, but it hasn't yet. The cards are in here at the moment. Once the lid's on, the cards have got less than one millimeter of play. So I think that's why the lid is staying in there because if the cards were bouncing back and forth for half a centimeter or for a centimeter, it would definitely get enough force up to open up the lid. But because it's such a tight fit, they can't do that. I guess the next thing to do is to finish sand it and then spray it with some lacquer. Cool. So obviously sanding is a little bit boring, so I'm not going to show you any of that. I took it up to 240 grit and then I cleaned with turpentine, then I sprayed varnish on it. Once that was dry and hardened, I used steel wool to rub it all down. Now the box feels super smooth in my hands. The kids can open and close it. I love the sapwood look on the front. I guess I'm happy with it overall. But of course, this is essentially my first box. I can definitely improve from here. Which brings me to summer of boxes. At a really high level, hashtag summer of boxes is just me practicing box making over the next few months of the Australian summer. Not really that hard to figure out, is it? Different styles, designs, sizes, uh, different techniques, hand tools and machines, but effectively I'm gonna try and narrow in on what makes a nice wooden box design, to me at least, and hopefully find a, an efficient and repeatable way of making these boxes. And this idea is just a continuation of the skill building practice that I've been doing lately. Only instead of me cutting a single joint, I'll be making multiple boxes, trying to improve on each one as I go. I don't know if that's something that other people are interested in seeing or maybe even taking part in, that'd be cool, but hey, I'm gonna do it anyway. So I've already got a few box making books lying around, but after buying this one a couple of weeks ago, I've decided that I wanna really focus in on this area. I don't plan on straight out copying boxes from here or from the other books, but there are a lot of great design tips in them that I really should pay attention to. And in case you're wondering, this is called 52 Boxes in 52 Weeks by Matt Kenny. Highly recommend it if you're interested in box making because it looks really cool. The boxes that I make, I, I want to make them functional. I don't want to make them just for practice. So this has a use, this has a purpose. For the moment, I only have two other boxes that I really have a need for. Obviously, I need to expand that list. Otherwise, it's going to be a very short summer. If you have any great videos, books, ideas or inspiration for me around box making, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to check it out. So we're very close to Christmas now, and it looks like I'm gonna end up having a couple of weeks away from the shop. In that time, I'm gonna sit down and plan out my first quarter of 2021. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna be practicing, what I'm gonna be building. I think it's gonna be a pretty big start to the year for me. I'm gonna have mortise and tenon practice, summer of boxes, obviously. Um, I've got a couple of big jigs to be built, some furniture I've been putting off, 
And then I've got a really loose plan to completely empty my workshop. I'm gonna paint the ceiling, I'm gonna paint the floor, I'm gonna get the dust collector and the air compressor, put them outside, which means I've gotta build a wall and door for them. I'm gonna run pipes through all here. There's a lot of stuff to be done. And then hopefully put it all back together again. It should be really fun. Obviously I'm gonna film a bunch of it, so I hope to see you follow along on YouTube or Instagram.